Welcome to Zono Sports Show, where you know Zono's. I'm your host, Zo. Today we'll be discussing our Big Mac double stack of games that we've got going on college football and NFL-wise, Saturday kickbacks and Sunday cool-outs. First and foremost, let's rewind. Let's talk about last night, the NFL, the Panthers lose 20-21 to to the Denver Broncos. Rematch of the Super Bowl from last year, earlier this year, should I say. Now, Cam played well early. Denver tightened up the D on him. I really saw him fling the ball around. However, uh, Von Miller... He got double teamed. Cam, it looks like what they did was adjust his drop back to where he wasn't dropping as deep as he was in the Super Bowl, which really eliminated that edge rush for Denver with DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller out on the edge. So that was a great coaching adjustment. I will say that. I made a prediction uh, on social media, Facebook, saying that Von Miller would have two sacks, a fumble for us. And, well, when they're not running to a guy's side and – when he's not getting any action, it's really hard for him to get in on the game and make those type of big, impactful plays that we saw him make in the Super Bowl. But um, he did make a sack when it counted late in the fourth quarter. Uh, Trevor Simeon managed the game or managed the game early. Didn't really cut up. Um, he did a great job getting the ball up and down the field as far as short dump off passes to the running back as well as check down routes. Uh, he he hit a lot of first reads. Um, he used his feet really well, got the th- third and ones and the second and twos that they needed as far as scrambling from the quarterback position. However, um, he didn't really do anything spectacular to say, Trevor Simeon, you're a great new replacement for Peyton Manning, starting quarterback. Uh, so I really need to see more from Trevor Simeon in that role. But great win first night, sir. Defense beat Cam up and outlasted him. Uh, missed field goal by Graham Gano late in the game. Now, if you watch the game... Gary Kubiak calls a timeout right before he kicks the first attempt. He made it a little bit to the right, but it kind of skated in and skimmed the upright. Uh, they they go back out to kick it a second time. Graham Gano, you missed that kick. Um, so obviously that was a very valuable timeout spent by Denver. Uh, so I, I do think that um, Carolina's a great team. They'll have a great season, but Denver, they'll have a good season as well. But Trevor Simeon, he's going to have to do a little more if they really want to win a championship opposed to just manage a game the way he did because I don't think he can manage a game and get away with the things that Peyton Manning could get away with uh, because he still has, he still was Peyton Manning and had that IQ at quarterback. So great win, Broncos. Now, Friday night, our Friday night showdown, we've got number 13 Louisville going up against Syracuse on the road. This is Lamar Jackson's first road game as a sophomore. I'm really anxious to see how he plays against better competition, opposed to last week when they played the 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 scum on the bottom of Bikini Bottom, uh, Charlotte. Um, you know, Charlotte's transitioning into an FBS role full-time, so... They're a program that still has to develop, which which is why I was not superly super overly impressed with that win. Eric Eric Dungey, the sophomore last week, had 34 passing uh, excuse me 34 completed passes with 40 passing attempts for 355 yards, two TDs versus Colgate. Uh, they're an FCS opponent. Syracuse won that. I want to say 33 to seven. Now, I went to that game last year when Syracuse came to Louisville and played Louisville here. From what I saw, the O-line could not uh, um, contain the rush from Louisville, so Eric Dungy had a tough time as a freshman last year here at Papa John's. However, I look forward to them slinging the ball around a little more, forcing these DBs to play defense in the Carrier Dome. And um, I I do think the Louisville defense must limit passing. Um, They must limit the passes to Amba Edatawo. That's their leading receiver. He had two touchdowns the other day. Um, I, I want to say that Louisville can easily win this game. However, I can't make that statement because they just haven't played a road game yet. We don't know what Lamar Jackson's going to be like, this new improved quarterback on the road at Syracuse against a team that's much better than the competition from last week because I can't, frankly, I can't use last week as a measuring stick for the Cardinals. Now, um, can he deliver that Golden Goose moment, a Heisman like performance? People know that when people play LSU for some reason, they get the highlights. They get the big 40, 50-yard run. LSU, excuse me, Syracuse defense 
is pretty well known and renowned for being loose and will give you some yardage. LSU's Leonard Fournette last year, um, he, he had a big game against LSU as well as, well as Brandon Harris did. Um, excuse me, big game against Syracuse. Um, Brandon Harris got loose and had a much better game than he had last week against Wisconsin. So Louisville, can you go ahead and exploit that weak, traditionally weak Syracuse defense? Now also, cheap chicken on the menu for Saturday. Arkansas versus TCU, they're crabs at the bottom of a barrel, a crowded barrel. You've got a lot of teams who've got that 1-0 record. However, they didn't play well last week. So I look forward to seeing both of these teams improve. Uh, both defenses are more questionable than a love and hip-hop relationship. We don't know who we're going to get from either side. Arkansas won 21-20 last week versus Louisiana Tech. TCU 59-41 against South Dakota State FCS competition. TCU traditionally is supposed to be a stout defense under Gary Patterson. However, that doesn't seem to be the case this year, giving up 41 points to South Dakota State. That's the wrong Dakota. North Dakota State's the champs. Now, I will like to, I would like to see um, Austin Allen and Kenny Hill play much better for their teams this week. Both QBs against their respective opponents last week had two interceptions, so um, I do think this will be a high-scoring game or potentially low-scoring game depending on how the turnover battle is won. So, uh, but I do think Kenny Hill will throw for a few touchdowns, and with TCU giving up points like that to South Dakota State, I'm pretty sure Arkansas is going to get a little bit of that cheddar. So, that's how I do feel about that game. Not too many highlight games this week. A lot of cupcake games. However, the, one, the big one of the week that people are anxious to see, Virginia Tech versus Tennessee. That's a game at Bristol Motor Speedway. It'll hold 150,000. They say it's the largest crowd to watch a football game in college football history, um, which I'm sure they'll try to surpass that at Texas Motor Speedway or Indy at some point. However, I don't think they should. Now, that game is a highlight game because, for one, Bud Foster, he's the one guy who was retained. Well, I'm sure there were more co multiple coaches retained when Fuente took over, but he was retained by Virginia Tech and Fuente. So Bud Foster, that defense, can they show up and be a traditional Bud Foster defense and make the plays to limit Josh Dobbs, Josh Malone, Alvin Kamar, Jalen Hurd, all those weapons that Tennessee has on offense? Can they limit those? Um, now, also, Tennessee, you got to bounce back from last week. You had the rough game against Appalachian State. Appalachian State, not a bad team. However, they are not the competition that you will see for the remainder of the season. You've got Georgia, and then at Texas A&M, and then back at home playing Alabama. That's a tough stretch mid-year. So you guys have got to show improvement week two against as much tougher opponent in Virginia Tech because, frankly, a lot of guys and a lot of gals don't think that Tennessee the Tennessee Volunteers are fit to even be in the top 25 at this point with that performance last week. But I think they bounced back against Virginia Tech with that in the back of their mind at Bristol, juiced up behind that home crowd, wanting to come out and play well. I think they actually beat Virginia Tech handily. Um, and when I say handily, I mean handily. Now, the Vols must play free like the old underdogs. Don't get caught up into those preseason rankings. Uh, we see what happened with a lot of teams that were ranked high, but um, their results last Saturday weren't what they would have liked them to be, um, in, in mainly Oklahoma against Houston. Um, Dobbs must stay in the pocket. Be patient. Um, Dobbs, just be patient in the pocket. Let the plays develop. you got to use your arm. You can run when you need to, but Dobbs has to pay attention to his receivers, and when it's not there, just dump it off to the safety valve. You're running back. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. Just be patient. It's almost like waiting in line at a Walmart customer service counter. Wait your turn. If nothing's there, just be patient. Make the best decision for the offense, okay? Now, uh, mentioning that big game, let's move over to NFL. It's time for some NFL juice. Now, September 11th, it's a 15-year of our anniversary this weekend. Um, I, I do send out sympathies to those families who were affected by that. I remember that day. Um, I'm anxious to see what players and fans do. Um, as you all know, I'd like to see how things transpire around the league in regards to protests. Colin Kaepernick, um, his protest that's going on right now, everybody knows he's obviously taking a knee for the national anthem. Um, it's made a lot of news, news channels, CNN, uh, Fox, NBC, ESPN. It's quite a big deal right now in the NFL. Um, he's supposedly 
taking those knees in for protests and injustice, and he's not against the military. He has said those things. I'm anxious to see how players respond across the league, across the, a national platform that will be recognized by countless households. What statement will other teams try to make, other players try to make? The Seahawks say they have something special planned. I am anxious to see on a Monday night what the Seahawks do have planned. Well, excuse me, not the Seahawks. Um, I, I'm anxious to see what the Seahawks specifically have planned, uh, but the Niners play on Monday night. I'm anxious to see that as well. Um, so a few big games that I saw on the NFL schedule that I just wanted to highlight. Giants versus Cowboys. No Tony Romo, of course. And they've got a call on Dak the man Prescott. Now, Dak Prescott, great player. He outshined most players in the preseason who were coming into the NFL, uh, rookies and free agents who were trying to make a team. This guy threw for five touchdowns, had zero interceptions in the preseason. So obviously he will be a great replacement for the Cowboys um, in Tony's absence. Um, it may, he may be somebody that, that, that takes over that job if he plays well enough in Texas. Uh, Tony's getting up there in age, and he has a lot of problems with that back. Showtime for the young guns, Des Bryant and Odell. So, you know, Odell, he'll do his whip, and, and Des will do his X-Factor uh, signals and if anybody scores and gets first downs. But I, I am anxious to see how both of those receivers play going up against one another. Uh, they both like attention. They're both showmen. So that'll be a fun game to watch. Also, the Patriots versus the Cardinals. No Tom Brady. You got Jimmy G, baby. That, that's that's Dick Vitale's nephew, Jimmy Garoppolo. No, I'm just playing. Jimmy Garoppolo, he'll be playing in place of Tom Brady for the first four games of the season due to that suspension for Tom Brady. Um now, the, he's an OVC guy from Eastern Illinois. There's another quarterback that's, that was from Eastern Illinois, Tony Romo. So I'm anxious to see, can, can Jimmy Garoppolo, can he deliver in, in the clutch? Can he just uh, jump in the flow of a game and, and perform as the starter? For a team like the Patriots in Foxborough, where they're traditionally used to winning, can he come in Gillette and actually make, well, excuse me, go into Glendale? It's not a home game this week. They're in, they have to go to Glendale and make a difference um, and, and do more, as I stated previously, with Trevor Simeon, manage a game. we got to see you do more, Jimmy Garoppolo. You're playing for the Patriots. You have no Gronk this week. Gronk got a hamstring issue. Uh, the Cardinals defense, Honey Bee's back on the hunt. The Honey Badgers coming back to the lineup. Uh, coming back from an injury that he suffered last year. I look forward to seeing Robert Nikim Dichie. He was an addition in the draft to replace Darnell Dockett, their longtime mainstay there in the middle on the defensive line. Palmer will be slinging balls like beers at a baseball game. So, Carson, can you get the ball to John Brown, to Larry Fitzgerald? Can you get it to Ellington out of the backfield? I want to see what you got, Carson Palmer. You had a great season last year. He still got the juice, still got the long ball. So, I want to see how many beers at this baseball game Mr. Palmer is slinging. So we move right along the Rams versus 49ers on Monday night. I'm anxious to see that as well. Cali Swag District for the late night. Teach me how to Dougie Rams. You guys are out in L.A. now. You get a Monday night game. It's on the road, but you had the primetime preseason game on a Saturday where you came back and beat the Cowboys. Now I'd like to see, can, can the Rams take that next, next step? Rams. You have enough. You've got Todd Gurley and you've got Jared Goff in the draft. Okay, those are two high picks. Todd Gurley's proven himself. Jared Goff played fairly well in the preseason. G and G, not D and G. It's name brand designer. G and G. You guys gotta show up for the Rams. You should have enough now. You got Aaron Donald in the draft a few years ago for the defensive line from Pittsburgh. So the Rams I expect them to play much better this year and compete for that NFC West with Seattle and Arizona and everybody else. Uh, well, excuse me. Yeah. Um, Monday. Um, oh, oh, also, um, the Niners, uh, just to finish off that game, the Niners, I don't like their stability at quarterback. Blaine Gabbard and Kaepernick, I, I don't like it. Um, um, they're just, it's just That's like choosing between church socks and, and diabetic socks. Neither one are fancy or look nice to wear. Um, also, they've got a, a lot of protests going on, so I'm looking to see what will transpire and how fans will react, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Monday will be our new show time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and um, 
what we'll do on Monday, we'll go over scores from the weekend typically, and also we'll recap games from college and pro. Um, shout out to Serena. Love her great athlete. She lost last night to um, uh, her competitor. Uh, she dropped from her ranking as well from what I saw this morning. So we'll have to see what Serena does to bounce back in tennis. Now, um, I've had a great time talking to you all. Um, make sure you come back for next show. I've got all the stuff for you guys to hear. Thank you for watching the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos.